Over a thousand cars change hands in Ireland every day. New or used, it's all about the sale. We can allow you 9,000 on a trade -in. No. It's a pride thing. Salespeople want to be number one. Thank you very much for the business, okay? And you do become a little bit addicted almost to it. The sales pitch has changed. I get great crack in getting into a cat suit. It's nothing like getting a good deal across the line. And to get the customers in, anything is possible. <laughs> Flat interior, to me, that looks like something your mask to go over the legs when it's cold in the wintertime. Buying or selling, a car is always a big deal. I'm looking to actually try and beat a company record, so that's why I'm for you know. Any guesses? 2022 was a roller coaster year like no other. That's actually a good idea. You have no idea, like. I'm never going to do job anyway. That's fine. Yeah, go on. Brilliant. I'll pick a spot. Let's say it's the the door sill. I'll pick that spot. As soon as the line's up like that, that's going to be straight. So once you know you're in line, everything else is in line. It's a costly time to search for a bargain. Use prices are up nearly 70% since before the pandemic. Anything that snares makes no difference in India too is okay. Right? That, that, we're not going to be that crazy about it, but something like that, you're looking at what, half a foot there off, so that needs to be fixed, because it just looks sloppy. It, does, it looks like it doesn't match. There's no shortage of used vehicles for sale at Kylemore in Dublin. Over 300 cars, mostly imports from Japan, are lined up for sale. It's been a busy summer so far. The more you do it, the better you get it out. So the price that we, we sell our cars at, it's a non-negotiable price. And there's a reason for that, because we try and sell the cheapest cars in the country. There's a strict no-haggle policy in operation. The price displayed on the car is the price customers must pay. Our business is majority mass volume. So I guess it's the same. It's like you can't go into Curry's and say, oh, I like the telly, but I don't like the price of it. Do you know, it's, it's the same. You still buy the telly. Hi, Leslie Leon, how you doing? It's Sinead here. Just a quick video, having spoken to you about the Honda Vessel. How are you doing, Martina? Connor here. I want to say thanks very much for the inquiry with us. The car you inquired about is still available for sale. We have some great finance options available. Nine times out of ten, you, you'll kind of get a fair idea whether or not somebody's serious about buying a car or not. Hot weather brings in the hot deals, I find, you know. It'll help for going to the boy now, hopefully, so we'll get used to it, do you know what I mean? <laughs> Good morning, Carmel Cars. Helen speaking. Can I help you? Owner Graham plans to kit out his staff with a brand new look, all in his own favourite colours. There's 25 people kitted out, nine pieces of kit. I'll call out what it is, and you tell yeah. me what size it is. OK, yeah. Or Shane. The shirt is 16.5. You, you start off when you just think, OK, there's a shirt to choose, a pair of trousers. I'll have this sorted in an hour, a week, two weeks probably in, full-time job. Arsenal's my team, so it was always going to be red and white. If I'd left the cars, I could always go into fashion. OK, no bother. Thanks, Michelle. Bye. To keep the sales team on their toes, Graham has also dangled the incentive of a free holiday in Dubai. You might iron the shirt this time. The only best, though. The only best, though. <laughs> There's two trips to be won, and there is three people within six points of each other. I don't know who's going to win. And that's exactly what we aimed to do three months ago when this began. And it's the excitement is palpable in there now. Hi, Abdul, it's uh, Shane here in Colmar Cars. Um, thanks very much for the inquiry. You can give me a call back to our range of test drive. Looking forward to having you in. Any questions, give me a call. OK. <laughs> so when you're pulling out from the curb, make sure you follow a system called gear, observation, signal. I turned 17 in October of last year. I applied to get my licence two days after that. Like maybe give another check of the right shoulder because things could change quickly. Every time one of my friends gets a car, I'm always looking at it. I'm like, oh, how many litres is it? Like, what kind of engine is it? It's very good race, yeah. Just to stop here on the left, so. And now at this point, I'm literally walking down the road and I'm like, Dad, that car will do. Realistically, I can't really just choose a car off the side of the road and just start driving it, because I think that would be illegal. 
three out of four cars sold are second hand and older cars that young drivers tend to buy have jumped in price the most. Hi, you have a car up on Dundee. Yeah, would you be able to tell me a bit about it? Is that the only problem that you've run into while you had the car? Is it is it a good car otherwise? Okay. I live in a village. It's just the small things for me that getting into a car, being able to drive myself to school, being able to drive myself back and not having to ask my parents. Last year, at the end of sixth year, when you pulled up to school, there was about 11 cars outside, which doesn't sound like a lot, but there was only 20 people in the class. So that's over half of the class that were driving themselves to and from school. There's a Kia Rio for 3,600 euro. Personally, not my type of car. There's a lot of Nissan Micras for sale, but Dad doesn't like that car. If Dad doesn't like it, I'm not getting it. I have six children, two boys and four girls, aged from 26 down to 17, and I've got them all car so far. And Rachel is my baby now, and she wants to get on the road. The boy is the oldest. He has got a Ford Mondeo. Kira Dean has a Renault Clio. Thomas Dean, he's a Renault Megane. Emma, and she drives a Chevrolet Spark. And then I have Julian, and she drives a Renault Clio as well. There's six cars in the household. Dad doesn't have a car, technically, but he has lots of cars, because he can just get into any car and choose to drive it. Hopefully, there'll be seven soon enough with mine. Now, would that price be fixed, or is there any chance that you'd be able to get that down a little bit? Uh, I'll just have to have a chat with my dad about it, and then I'll call you back tomorrow. Is that OK? OK, thank you. Thanks so much. Bye. Dad! I was 20 years of age. The lady's name was Mary from Limerick. Yeah. The first car I sold was an Audi A1. It was a young customer, so she was only just starting out in driving. I sold an 08 520 BMW at a Tesco car park on my lunch break from work. Her father, the family came along to collect the car, and through the whole process, I ended up actually selling the whole family cars. I made a profit, and I think it was at that point I sort of said to myself, this is something that I could actually do. Among the upmarket used cars on sale at Ashford Motors are classics and a range of supercars with eye-watering price tags. I don't think you can hear me that much over again. <laughs> it's young guys who've made a lot of money with crypto and tech. They flaunt that wealth. It's just such a raw that there's a really raw noise to it. And that's what people love about this car. See the way it kind of comes down a little bit? And then it's only when you give it a rev. Woo! I know. <laughs> this Lamborghini we got from a Chelsea football player in the UK. This is the Chelsea colours, so this was a bespoke colour for him. This is retailing now at the moment for 360,000, so it's only spare change. <laughs> Social media has changed the way dealers like Nadia promote and sell their upmarket cars. I get grey crack in getting into a cat suit. We were selling a Porsche Panamera. It looked exactly like the one that was in the dark night. I dressed up as Catwoman. I was driving around and I was going to save the day. We actually did sell the Panamera from that specific video. It sold to a guy in Galway who rang me, left a hefty deposit on the car and I got it delivered to him the following day. I run the business, the day-to-day -day stuff. I do the sales, the after sales, the buying in the stock, the selling the stock. But trust me, I will not break a nail going near a car when it comes to mechanics. 
Somebody rings us and I pick up the phone, I say, hi, how are you, Ashford Motors? They can, they usually say, can you pass me on to a sales rep or can I speak to the boss? And I say, no, listen, you are speaking to the boss or is that the final price or whatever? I'm like, yeah, it is. Or can I talk to someone else? I'm like, there's no one else, it's just me. Very good, how are you? I'm in a selling mood, of course I'm in a selling mood. Over 20 mode. years, Owen has seen lots of change in the car business. We don't want fancy glass showrooms. And basically, the more we sell, the bigger we'll become. A Ryanair school of motoring as such. Today, Owen manages CarMax, a no-frills used car supermarket in Fermoy, County Cork. The reason I sit out here in the office in front of everyone is I hear everything and I see everything. What value is our car towards Sales it? executive Justin is chasing up an earlier online inquiry. He has high hopes for a sale. Oh, thank you so much, Una. They ripped me off because I prepare a car the way I'd expect it to be. You know, because it just pops the colour. It makes it look a lot better. The polishing king, they call me, yeah. Uh, because I polish everything. <laughs> Good afternoon, Neve. Here's a quick video of our beautiful 2016 Volvo V60. Most customers nowadays are looking via the internet, you know, so you're not the first person that they've come to. So you use your own show business, you know, presenting the car yourself, your personality. She has a beautiful cream leather to stand out from the rest of the guys, you know, which will make them want to buy from you. Throughout the interior, the clearance from the bottom is not too high, so the dog can easily manage to get in and out. People are getting a bit nervous to spend. I've had three customers now that have just hauled off buying until the new year. Increasing interest rates aren't helping it either. You know, we've just had to push our interest rates up again. Everybody knows why they're here. I'm here to be like the school teacher sometimes. I suppose they're here to make money, they're here to sell cars, they're here to carve out a profession for themselves. There needs to be someone in control of it all, otherwise it just falls apart. Yeah, so I'd say I'm kind of a, a jack of all trades in terms of the marketing for CarMax. Dennis is down from head office in Cork City. He's come up with a plan to boost car sales over the Halloween holiday. I suppose I write direct and uh, I don't start, thank God. But first, he needs to convince the sales team to star in a Halloween video for social media. The way I have it scripted is, Mark is going to say, hey, look guys, we need to do a marketing video for CarMax for Halloween. Have you got any ideas? Then one of you, maybe you own, was going to say, oh, yeah, maybe a spooky jingle. And then it would cut to a dream sequence where Justin comes out of CarMax and he sees somebody dressed the Sonic the Hedgehog running through the car park really fast. <laughs> then, right here we are. I don't see anything wrong with that. No? Well, it's just I'm 20 odd years now selling cars, and I'm going to look like a fucking buffoon. OK, that's fair enough, one. <laughs> yeah, no, I get you. You don't have to be in it if you really don't want to. That's fine. Dennis's spooky Halloween video is off to a bad start. <laughs> It is very male dominant. My objective was to sort of make it so as that it, it didn't become a factor. Sometimes you might have a couple coming out and I beeline straight to the wife and I just, it's all about her, you know, and then she's really happy, she's really comfortable and then she loves me. You know, customers, they might feel a bit more comfortable dealing with another lady. You know, oh, well, you know, that girl, you know, I might get on with her or I might be able to not feel as stupid maybe if they're asking questions that they might not know the answer to. At Kylemore Cars, the owner's new look outfit has been rolled out to staff. So if you ask Helen or Sean, okay? Yeah, no worries. Two. Graham's idea was to just try and have us all wearing the same uniform for that just looks more professional. Obviously, you know that we all work for Kylemore. Beneficial. It's so bad. It's all over huh? me, man, isn't it? Right, it's it's all all in in As staff try the new kit, it's not all plain sailing for owner Graham. Sinead would, without a doubt, be the, the fashionista of Colin Moore cars. So it was um, one that I approached with total fear. I think the, the guys are pretty happy with it's quite neutral. It's lovely. 
I saw Sinead looking at me <laughs> with concern. I eventually built up the co courage to talk to her, so I went over. We discussed the uniform. Yeah, there was a conversation about that. It was quite a short conversation. Um. <laughs> she told me her point of view, I told her my point of view, and ultimately we ended up uh, deciding that she was right and I was wrong. Two days remain before the sales team find out who's going on the company holiday to Dubai. What's your maximum budget then? Probably about 360 a month. Sinead is in fourth place for car sales this month, but she's still in the running for Dubai, and every car deal helps. Okay, I'm gonna drive it just. Yeah, yeah. He's a returning customer, so he's retention. He bought this vehicle here from us. We have to establish a price on his car. So hopefully we can facilitate something that's within budget and within reason to what he's looking to do. Okay, slight touch-ups here. Yeah. Is this? That is from... The wife, yeah? <laughs> no, I'll no? take the blame for that one. Okay. That was me. No matter what, I always want to be first. Definitely the Dubai trip is a massive incentive for us. It's a once-in-a-lifetime trip. Definitely something to give me the extra edge to, to go for a bit more, like, you know. So I'm just about to price this customer's car, if I can find it. And... I don't know much about what's planned for the holiday, because I think that's more so a surprise, really, like so. Oh, yeah, did this customer tell you where the car, his car was parked? All right. Oh, it's inside the gates, is it? Doesn't seem to be any damage or anything to worry about, really. Ah, it looks, it looks clean now, to be fair. We can allow you 9,000 on a, on a no, trade. When, uh, when uh, I go to the other uh, shop, he told me 10,000. Because yeah. a lot of people kind of have their own price in their head, what they're expecting to get for it, but that doesn't necessarily mean that that's what it's going to be worth either, especially kind of uh, trade-in value as well, like, you know, so... And if they've got another, other quotes from other dealers, like, that can make it a bit more tricky too, like, you know. Another dealer might give you more money for your trade-in, but the, all that means is he's charging you more on the car that you're purchasing. Mm -hmm. No. He likes the car. It's just a case of we need to make sure that the figures add up for him and also that his other half likes the car. I'd hope it goes through, but there's lots of different uh, variables as to how that can turn out. In Fermoy, Dennis from Marketing is pitching his Halloween video to the sales team. And he looks over and he sees somebody dressed as Thanos from Infinity War clicking his fingers and the cars next to him change. And then it just cuts to Happy Halloween from everyone at CarMax. You have no idea, like... That's OK. <laughs> that's OK. I, I have a fucking reputation. Like, I'll never yeah, get another job anyway. That's, anywhere, I'm that's okay? fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just thought, like, it, it ties in. CarMax is a bit of fun. It's, I know I'm saying any stupid dialogue. Hey, well, why don't you get in the middle of it? You're the marketing guy. Come on. Well, no, because I'm filming it. To be honest with you, we did, I, honest to God, we did say we don't want the guys to look like idiots. So that's why, if you listen back to the video that I pitched, the only dialogue we have is, what would we come up with, this, and the whole thing is a dream. So it's not, it's not like I'm saying, if you come to CarMax, everyone's dressed up and it's an absolute joke. So yeah, no, no, I, you know what, it's a great idea, and it is it's a good idea. And, and I, I, honestly, and I'm not sounding... Yeah. But I'm sitting here next to a spoof video, right? And I'm meant to be running a professional outfit. And I understand what you're saying, but that's something, right? for young guys to be doing, right? <laughs> or I'm not doing it. That's OK. I kind of knew this would happen, really. I kind of knew that. And I get, I get where he's coming from. He's, he's the, the senior figure. It, it makes sense. As I say, there's method to my madness. After the setback of a refusal from manager Owen, Dennis has a job on his hands to convince the team to take part in his marketing video. Emmett, what do you think of this? You're in this, and you're showing how strong you are by just pushing a car into a car space. That's all you have to do. That's all you have to do. You don't say anything. Would, would you rather be Thanos? No, I'm Thanos. Yeah. Yeah. No, you can you pull it down over your nose. Look, try it on. I'll show you, look. It's not bad. <laughs> I've actually put up in how many photos are in this, huh? No, no, no. <laughs> no. Mark, you pull it down like this. 
You pull it down like this. It's not bad. Yeah, you're just going to be on the inside of it. So I can have an idea. Um, okay. And then what I can do is, um, swing up tomorrow. The lads seem okay with it, but Owen, because he's the sales manager, he just doesn't want to be involved, and that's fair enough. I definitely think the costumes spooked him a little. If I was doing it again, probably wouldn't show him the costumes. Yeah, no, once we get it done, though, that's the main thing. Looking forward to seeing what we come up with. <laughs> One size fits all with these costumes, perfect. And then look, this is your glove then, Justin. Just glove. Only one glove? Just one glove, because if he has the two, he can kill loads of people. Brilliant. So, Jesus, that, that looks quite scary. Hey, Owen! <laughs> Owen! It's my favorite mini <laughs> Would you rather a Batman one? Would you be up for it? I'll, I'll get the bat I, can, I have a Batman one in the boot. I'll get that if you throw it on. You just, I mean, at least your face I, is not showing. I, I swear, no, I'm just coming outside, right? <laughs> so initially, Justin's in the dream. He right. walks out here, and is gonna, he's going to look down at here, and you're going to be running around here, right? And I'll speed you up, because you're Sonic the Hedgehog. I really don't want to do it. Like. It's not that bad. <laughs> I've had a person in here saying they were going to go to the police because they got a puncture months after they bought the car. I had a guy asking me where they the original hubcaps that were on the way on the car from from new. You just get a feeling, a sense about them. You know, they might not even really ask you about the car, and then they might say, "Oh, can you show me another car that's completely out of their budget?" And then there's the classic: I have to go and talk to the wife. I have to go and talk to the boss. We're here to help people pick and choose a car. We're not here to force our beliefs on them. Whether it be right or wrong, it's their belief, it's their money, it's their car, it's their decision. If they won't want that car, I won't be challenging their belief. This year, new petrol and diesel car sales are down 25%, but not here. We're all going electric, and there's nothing we can do about that. But if you can take the few pleasures of having a noisy engine, a real true petrol car that puts a smile on your face when you're driving it, and forget about all the doom and gloom for five minutes. I have dodgy knees, so I usually just do this very quickly. It's one, and I'm gone. A new arrival at Astro Motors, and one we've previously supplied. Any guesses? Any guesses? Ow, my fucking leg! <laughs> yeah, yeah, I didn't realise my foot was at the exhaust. Nadia's speciality is upmarket used cars. She's the boss and recently the face of the business on social media. Literally, I stumbled on this video thing by accident. New car came in one day. Can you guess what this car is by the noise of the exhaust? Any guesses? Well, if I can market myself and market my cars, why not? I am the face of the business. I do have boobs. Do you know what I mean? It's almost as if, like, you know, <laughs> we're all kind of going, oh, my God, you know, that's just the way I look. I dress like this every day. I didn't know it was going to get 1.6 million views and go viral. I didn't know it was going to sell the car. And when I did, I was like, aha, we've got something here. Any guesses? Whatever way I'm doing it, I don't really care. It's working. The car hunt in Kerry has been sidetracked. A big job on in the middle of everything. They're redoing our bathroom. We're getting a nice new one. It used to be pink. It was not nice. I just want to try to get Dad out of the house so that we can get back before he gets called away. Come on, Dad. Dad, come on. Come on, the plumber's coming through the door. The plumber's coming through the door now. This is our plumber, Brendan, the number one guy. He's saving the day for us. This happens every time we go anywhere. It's great. I love it. Do guys find me for them, I did, yeah. Where's the candidate? Dad! Dad! 
I'll switch it off now for all. Honestly, you never know what could happen in here. It's just, it's mayhem. Come on, Dad. Dad, come on. We have to go find me a car. Right, Rachel. Come on. And did, so, you, did you bring your checkbook with you? I did, yeah, I have it in my pocket. That's fine. And I have my safe, am I with you? You are safe with me, Dad. You've driven with me a lot of times before. I know, sure. Keep your hose down a bit. I just want to get a bit over here, okay? Okay. This is my baby. My pride and joy. Roisin and Tom are looking for something new to replace Roisin's beloved diesel. You just gonna sit in there or are you gonna help me? Oh, do you want a hand? Yeah, you can do the wheels there. You need a good, reliable car. We're out of town a little bit. The nearest village is about four kilometers. I think now is the right time to jump on the electric car bandwagon and a charge for us will do two weeks, you know, and it'll only cost us 13, 15 euro. It's a no-brainer really at this stage now, you know, and hope the electricity doesn't get too expensive. But the search for a suitable EV for Roisin is taking longer than expected. Biggest problem was they're all saying, oh yeah, you can get an electric car, but they don't, didn't have them to test drive. As a car buyer, it was really, really frustrating. And the dealers, you felt sorry for them as well yeah. because they have people wanting to buy the cars, but they can't get them. Kevin was up front with us. He said, look, going to try and get you one, but there's no guarantee. I've never seen anything like the last 18 months or so. It's one thing after another. It's Brexit, COVID, microchips. There's so much going on and we don't know where it's going to end, where it's going to stop. Coming in every morning, it's a bit depressing to look at a big empty yard behind us. We had that yard full of maybe 165 units at one stage and you're coming in the morning now, you're wondering will you play five-a-side football or start selling cars. Because some new cars are in short supply, there's a knock-on scarcity of trade-ins, which has a big impact. Used car prices has just gone through the roof. There's some crazy stories. Back in 2019, we were selling one-year-old Nissan Qashqai's for 23,950. Now we're selling 2019 Nissan Qashqai's for 27,950. This morning, Kevin is trying to locate Roisin's new EV, somewhere between Sligo and the car factory in France. Ray, how's things? I'm just under pressure for some of these cars. Is there any sign of this bow coming in yet? Look, I have a customer here. It's all right for you having a look at the boat, but I have my customer. What do I tell? I can't tell him that the boat is due in this week when I told him that the boat was due in last week. It's been due to come in for the last six or seven weeks. There's no sign of it. That particular car is actually the second person I'd lined up for it, so I've lost the customer because it's so late. I don't want to lose a second customer. When Ray was on the phone there, he gave me the name of the boat, so we went on to a Vessel Finder. You can actually check the mark position of it and it's uh, on its way to Rilla Skitty, so fingers crossed I can get them into it next two weeks. It's a bit complicated, the whole commission structure. Obviously, we have a basic salary, and then our commission is worked off each car, each unit that we sell. I don't think I'd like it if it was a set salary and I knew what I was to expect every month, whereas I do feel a great sense of ownership that um, what I take home is completely dependent on me. If I don't reach my minimum income, it does put pressure on us at home. That's why I don't really take leave that often. They're kind of telling me now at the moment I need to start taking my leave. For me personally, it keeps you sharp. You can sort of say, right, it's Wednesday, I need to sell three cars. This would be our saloons. Saloons, OK. Yeah. At CarMax, Dennis is ready to shoot the first scene of his online video for Halloween. The BMW and the Mercedes. Actually, we do those ones because I've never done those ones before. Uh, there's a flat tire in that. I think let's not include that. OK. You're clicking here, and then you'll turn up over in this lineup. And then you click again, and you're over in a different one. Sales executive Justin volunteered for the part of Thanos, supervillain from the Marvel comics. I can't do a click. Perfect. You'll yeah. have to put it in. Yeah. Oh, no, wait, OK, do this, do this, OK? Yeah, go on. 
Brilliant. And I'll just actually, I'll do one at the portrait angle there, Justin. OK. Well, I'm familiar with Thanos, yeah. So knowing the, the movie, knowing the click, what it means, definitely adds to what I know what he's expecting to get out of the shot. <laughs> Okay. So, okay, can I land, yeah. saw, and click? Sorry, land, pause, click. Yeah. Okay. One, two, three. Oh, wait, sorry. Yeah, do it again. Brilliant. Dennis's plan was to have no dialogue in his video, but Justin reckons a line or two from Thanos could work nicely. Yeah, I'm trying to think. There's like, he says the one I'll do it myself. Yeah. I can Google it actually. I like off the top of my head, and I, I'd be a fairly big fan of this stuff. Thanos. Um, Thanos famous sayings. Famous lines. Yes, Hang on. Um, the hardest choices require the strongest wills. Ooh. It's a bit heavy for Carmax, to be honest with you. What did it cost? Everything. Ooh. You know, you could even say you should have gone for. No, 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 you don't want to do something you like You should have that. gone for Carmax. That's actually a good idea. You should have gone for Carmax. Brilliant. OK, yeah. so that's perfect. That's you done so as Thanos. That's me done, yeah. Perfect. Right, we better go up so and see can we get him into an outfit. The Batman might be a good one. That's a good idea, actually. Perfect. Speed rules. Slow down, you're going too fast. Matter. There's still people, easy. Rachel, still drive it 60 along the road, so you should be driving yeah, slow. Yeah, and they're the kind of people that you shout behind and you tell them to get off the road. God, you say I that tell one you, I'm time. nervous right here when slow down. Rachel has brought her dad, Tom, to Tralee to search for a car. And Tom has brought his checkbook. I forgot the keys. <laughs> Sorry. Don't forget her head, girl. Come on. Right, now the lovely selecting cars here for you. I actually like those. Why do they have free motor tax? I'd love one of these. A Passat, like I'd feel like such a like boy racer. 17,900 euros. And you love me? I love you, all right, yeah. <laughs> dream on, baby, dream on. I like these, but I feel like they're giving me mom vibes. Mom vibes? Jeez, yeah. Christ, you poor thing, yeah. I feel like it looks nice and shiny. I know, one is a nice one over here, looking 11, more than your budget. I like the red. That's a nice one. But I color. think, I, like, look at the, I don't think that these are my type. I'm not like, can you see me driving that? I can see. It's not my vibe. I'd really love to have one before September 1st when I go back to school. It's, it's kind of unfair to young drivers to be expected to pay so much for a car because, I mean, in all honesty, we don't have that much money. I've been working now as a waitress for two years and I still don't have enough money. But, like, look at the price of that. I know, it's crazy. The Brexit is a big problem now. There's no cars coming in from England. And it's very hard to get them now. People are asking top dollar for them. But I have six children, so between them all, I bought them all cars all along, so... And Rachel's my baby, so I'll have to take care of her as well. I like this one. That's nice. It's a little bit pricey, but... Sit into that, see what you think of it. It's nice, I think. It looks like there's a lot of room in the back as well, which is good. There is a Yaris that is a 2012. It has five doors, exactly what I was looking for. Is that suit you you think? It has six gears, so I'm assuming that it must be over a 1.2. The only problem is that it had a quite big engine, and it's just insurance-wise, it might be a bit pricey. See, this is a 1.6 diesel, so you'd never get insurance on that. You'd have to check that up. Yeah, Don't yeah. forget to get your keys out of the car as well, love. That's, those ain't my keys. That is your keys. Oh, these are. <laughs> you wally. Everyone haggles, <laughs> especially Irish people, especially people from Cork. They love to haggle. If a customer says, oh, I'm just looking, I'll be like, OK, so you're around just looking at the talent. That would break the ass a little bit. I'm always a little bit surprised when a customer doesn't haggle. It's almost like, oh my God, what's going on here? Like, you know? You should never really show someone more than two or three at any one time because it confuses them. It's a numbers game. Like, I, I, I would say that on average, you probably sell 20%. And you do become a little bit addicted almost to it because the, the highs are quite high. The lows are low, but the highs are really high. You need to be jovial, you need to be ready for the customer. And in reality, you know, 80% of them are probably not going to buy anything. Where did you get 
you see our ads, actually? Where did you see the car? Uh, it was actually on Instagram. One of my friends had sent me uh, one of the videos you've done for that Audi over there, actually. You don't realise, actually, how many people you're reaching out to on Instagram and TikTok now. Because of the pandemic, we couldn't have customers actually coming out to us. So I sort of said to myself, well, how are we going to sell secondhand cars to people that can't come out to visit us? You know, what I'd be saying to you is, body's good on it, brand new tires, brand new alloys. It just happened by accident, like honestly. And then it got a sale. It's got DRL headlights, you've got Bluetooth media, and you've also got reverse camera sensors. Yeah, I see the reverse camera there, that's pretty yeah. slick, yeah. <laughs> you want to take it for a test drive, maybe? I'd love to, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah perfect. Nadia's latest appearance on social media has gone according to plan. Any guesses? That has nearly 120,000 views already. The reaction is 80% good, maybe 20% a little bit negative. It's got a chesty cough, whatever it is. <laughs> Wasn't paying attention, too busy looking at the chassis. Nice headlights, uh, nice twin cams. <laughs> <laughs> it's hilarious. That's just the way I am. Like, why can't I look like that and have the crack with people and kind of get them to guess the car? And a lot of people know what TikTok is about. It's like clickbait. You put something out there that's a little bit shocking to drag customers in. So our videos are always based with a movie in mind because there's always a cool car in a movie. This was a little bit more sweeter, you know, dreams come true. You know, looking back at my younger self and saying, come on, let's take a, let's take a ride in the Lamborghini. I wanted something that showed that if I can do it, anyone can do it. Like, look at what I have going against me. Woman, mixed race, you know, running a car dealership that's predominantly in the male industry. And I suppose that's the idea behind it, is that if you do have dreams, follow them, because they can come true. This is some buzz, let me tell you. <laughs> what else would you get this? And your boss is bringing it to the boy as well. Like, come on. Today, the search for a car usually begins online. And social media is the new tactic to entice buyers. You can't just sell, 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 because as soon as people see an ad, what do they do? Good look, I don't want to look at that. See, like that toy got grey. Somewhere on Mike Tyson's back garden. But if you throw in a little bit of, I don't know, comedic things, give them something to, to look at that's entertaining. Sprinkle in your cars that you want to sell, you want to push. It's more coins in here than my nanny's got. Little boys, he was going to be interested. And the foot room, no room in here. Shaquille O'Neal, come on in here. Two games of basketball. It's been a good sales month for Connor. So he's confident he'll win one of the remaining places on the company holiday to Dubai. For the boy, the incentive with the sales team was obviously amongst the four of us. So it's the top two on the sales team within three months. Obviously, there's only two of us that can go. This month really helped me out. Like, I think I've done 54 cars already. So that's why, obviously, that held me on my way, you know? <laughs> In a nutshell, he absolutely wants it. Halfway through this month, I actually asked Connor, did he have a twin that he sent in? <laughs> because he's a new man. I don't think I've witnessed anybody to be so focused. It all comes down to motivation and your mindset as well. Like, if you have a good mindset this month. Not bad, yeah. I've seen you looking at a Toyota Vitz that we have. It's really changing lifestyle, you know, and it's helped me mentally, it's helped me. Give us one second, mind, and I'll be back on to you. With just a day left to secure one of the golden tickets to Dubai, every sale on the board makes a difference. Obsessed, you'll see. I think me more so. I'm just constantly looking at it all the time, seeing how it changes. Everybody wants to be on top. Sometimes you could have a really good day. Sometimes you could have a really bad day and someone else is having a great day. It pushes you because I think anybody who's in this industry, it's a natural competitiveness. One more happy customer. Thank you. 
the main strength would be not to get overly affected with knocks. It's a it's a tough business. Once you start wheeling and dealing and realizing that you can actually use what you have, use yourself, you can value things for low and sell them high. I think car salespeople in general have a stigma, but the internet has kind of put an end to an awful lot of it because the days of being able to sell bad cars and, and, and the mileage wrong on cars, those days are gone because the internet is, is, is open there. People can check everything. We didn't know how good we had it back then. Our supply to meet demand, that stopped. There's plenty of customers, no doubt about that, but we just didn't have the cars to supply them. After a long wait, Kevin managed to find a new electric car for local customers Roisin and Tom. Delivery day is here. Well, it took long enough to come. We'll have to oh, check it, have a look like around it as well. He works anyway, so we'll yeah. go this one. It's nice. This one is nice. Yeah, it looks a lot bigger than your old car, doesn't it? Yeah. Quite an imposing front on it too, isn't it? Yeah. It does look bigger, doesn't it? I like the, uh, the chrome detail. Let's go sign our lives away. With the government levy off, it's going to come in at around €40,000. Depends on the deal Kevin gives us now in the end, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's taken a while, hasn't it? It's been, it has. been as frustrating for you as it was for us. It is. Like, you know, if you're waiting for one car, we're waiting on 50. We're waiting for a load, yeah. So, yeah, 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 I know. Did you get the charger in the house yet? No. Not yet, no. It takes a couple of weeks to get it in. You have to apply in. Yeah. yeah. You'll put a full charge in it first, though. We'll, we'll <laughs> fill it up, don't worry. This year, the sale of EVs is up 80%, despite the talk of blackouts. We're going backwards, going back into the dark ages. I don't know about the power cuts and that. Yeah, they might happen, they might not happen, we don't know. We probably thought that this year, if we could ride this year out, it'd be okay. But I think next year is going to be a hard year as well. The power's not going to be off 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So it could be you're going to have to be smart and plug it in at a time that you can charge it. Nice new shiny car. We better wash it when we get home. <laughs> if the car drove the way it should drive for you and yeah. you feel comfortable in it, yeah. we'll, we'll have the car. At CarMax, Owen is focused on the day-to-day -day business of selling. 250 as well, if it helps, right? Nice to meet you. Yeah, thank you. While Dennis gets ready to shoot the final scene of his marketing video for Halloween. Look at the state of this thing, like. I just got a There's a fucking tail. <laughs> now, wear that at the back, anyway. Huh? Definitely wear that at the back. Do you reckon? <laughs> Trust me, I've gone from experience. No, I only wear it at the front. You'll be going, come on. Oh, sugar, this has been recording the whole time. <laughs> Don't trip. The videos are great fun and everything, but there has to be someone here as well that has to be a little bit more professional. He's fast. <laughs> yes, it's great to see it online, that, that fun that cartoon. And, but in the back of our minds, it has to be a professional side to it too, because what if my 30,000 euro car breaks down? Am I going to have faith in these clowns? Thanks, Mark. You're a good sport. Yes, yeah, so far, really good. Uh, in fairness, Mark is gas as well. So that's perfect. Thanks for that. With Halloween in the can, Dennis is thinking ahead to future productions at CarMax. The other pitch I had was Mark was going to be Forrest Gump running through for mine. There's only one Forrest Gump here, though, so check. Who? That's it. Who, me? Yeah. That's what we could do, actually. CarMax is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. <laughs> Once you've seen it, if you have any questions, you can get me on the details below. We'll be leaving in a week, week and a half. They find out today we began a party bus half six on a Wednesday after everyone finishes work. That's it, three nights in Dubai, all inclusive, everything paid for. How's your bank? Sun, sand and sea. So you have your boarding pass to Dubai, your passenger name. Today, the Kyle Moore team will find out who gets the last of the golden tickets to Dubai. There hasn't been an update now since last week, so I say it's fairly close. Hands are sweaty. <laughs> well, don't say that. 
That's that's who's gone. Nobody else deserves, to be honest. <laughs> Nobody deserves it. <laughs> Everybody's trying to stay cool, though obviously it's, it's, it's fairly tense. It is fairly tense from what I can gather today. Um, I think realistically we all just want to find out who's going now at this stage. Gather everybody around. Let's see what happens. The results are in. Be proud of yourself. He's put a lot of graft in. Um, it's been a tough few months. Hot weather, everything else. As a sales manager, I'm proud of you. And the winners are as follows. And Shane. Very short to enjoy the uh, holidays. There for yours and Connor. I think these especially out, especially out for you. Oh, great! <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Thanks. I've wanted a car the, from the minute I turned 17, so that I'd be able to drive myself to school. Thankfully, I have Dad outside that was able to get me a car. Every dad needs a bit of, come on, Dad, please, do this. Please, Dad, I want a car, please. I bought this car in McKelligus Garage in Central E. It was here for a while till my project. She was rolling and screaming at me and trying to get everything done, sure. But you don't know all the young people want to get on the road as quick as they can. Perfect. The car has actually been sitting outside for three weeks and I passed my test three weeks ago. I cannot tell you how many hours I spent literally ringing every single insurance company I've ever heard the name of. The cost of my insurance was 1,686 euro, which is a little bit much, but it is the absolute best quote I found. I'm so grateful for Dad to be able to help me out. I am gonna have to pay him back eventually, <laughs> but I'm gonna just say it's a long-term loan. <laughs> this is a high spec car. Very high spec. Just a job. Can I put all dims on it, make it a real boy racer car? No, you're not doing this. <laughs> so I'm after buying some things for the car. Look at this. This is stuff to pimp up my lovely car. Okay, give your opinions. This. What is that for? <laughs> it's an internal cleaning with two microfiber, one long pile, you know, for the, so I can scrub the window if I need to. Fan blow, keep that clean. What else do you get? And I'm after getting a car freshener, Little Joe. Little Joe? What's <laughs> he's, that? A he's, strawberry. It's an air freshener. He makes a car smell nice. looking thing I ever saw. You're some strawberry, all right. What else do you get? And I have okay. another Little Joe. To a blue one. What do you want, a blue one? To make the car less A blue smelling. and a pink one. And I have some... One for a boy and one for a girl. Is it have something to tell me? <laughs> Why do you think I wanted a car, Dad? I'll take the car off if we don't behave ourselves. For the final job of the day, James and Greg head out to check 300 cars before closing up. We're locking the cars. That's it. We make sure everything's locked up. If it's not, someone's head's going to roll. 300 plus every day. If you don't want anybody coming in, jumping the railings and robbing anything, you know? Everything has to be T's and Q's crossed, or T's and Q's. Oh, this car's open. Well, yeah, sales people, what? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. 